you tell us a little bit about how the birds form, how you got into music and how the birds form? Well, uh, uh, I, I grew up, uh, my, my generation, of course, uh, we had the great rock and roll in 55, 1956 with Elvis and everybody. And um, I remember seeing Elvis on Ed Sullivan, but I really remember the Beatles on Ed Sullivan in February of 64. That's what changed my life. Uh, when I was starting out in, well, in rock and roll uh, in 56, I'm trying to put my words here, I didn't have any inclination or desire to learn the guitar then. I, I love the music. So I'm in the sixth grade listening to Elvis Presley do Don't Be Cruel. When folk music came along and my older sister had gotten me into the really good stuff, Pete Seeger and Lead Belly and things like that. And on from there, I went into bluegrass and, and uh, Bill Monroe and all that. That's what got me. And I learned the guitar and the mandolin in that order. Uh, and never thought I'd make a living at it. I just loved it. I had such a passion and I just fell into things. I kept, Eric, I kept uh, thinking I was gonna go, uh, uh, go well, next semester to college. I was going to go uh, register for the next semester, you know, and, and something would happen. A door would open. And it went from being in a bluegrass band in LA when I was 18 and playing in country Western bars with a fake ID to getting into the birds. And shortly after seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan and all that, and me and a million other guys that played guitar all of a sudden plugged in, you know, and which is stated in the, uh, in the documentary, but, uh, no, I loved, I just loved the music. I never thought I'd make any money. And I started making $10. The first time I got paid was 1963, I made $7. So I, I, I mark it back to 63, uh, and that's how long I've been playing professionally. Now, what were the dynamics in the beginning with the birds? These guys, we all came out of folk music. And then, of course, we met at the Troubadour Club in LA. Uh, I saw Roger McGuinn at Hoot Night, at the open mic Hoot Night, playing a 12 string acoustic and singing, I want to hold your hand. I went, what is that? And it was the Beatles. He had heard the same song I heard on Ed Sullivan and he was up there going for it. And he was, it was good, you know. And I got to know him about a month or two later, he hooks up with Gene Clark and David Crosby and they're playing as a trio acoustically and they were good, they were good singers. And, uh, I got to know them, and then somehow I was brought up to be the bass player. I don't, well, David was going to be the bass player, and he, he didn't want to do that, so it wasn't comfortable for him. So I got the call and bluffed my way into it, Eric. He said, can you play the bass? I said, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. fine with the bass. I never I had owned a bass. So, but yeah. it was a great band. I was so uh, blessed, lucky to be in that group. I look back on that. And whatever I do, I'll always be uh, formerly of the birds. And that's okay. That's okay with me, you know, because uh, I had some great other adventures. What do you remember most about working uh, with David Crosby and the birds? Like, was there a moment that stands out? There's so many moments working with David. I, it would take two hours to tell you. I love David dearly. And I love Roger. And we're very close. We're all very close friends. And unfortunately, we've lost Mike and Gene, but... Uh, we still are, uh, we, we were one of the only bands, Eric, uh, that sat together at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. And most bands are spread around the room. They don't speak to each other. And they, yeah. you know, and, and seriously, I think we were the only, probably one of the only bands and we sat together and there, there was issues, but we, we all got along and we, we were honored for this particular time in our life. And, and we all uh, stood up for it. And, and, you know, we were there for each other that night. Well, so, what so. were some of the issues then? Because, I mean, it's great that you still <laughs> had that chemistry. But yeah. what, what uh, were the I have, a, I, I have a wonderful memoir coming out. And who doesn't? I have a wonderful memoir coming out in September. And all of those issues are dealt with in a very light, funny way. You'll see them. So I couldn't list them all to you. Like any other band. Uh, you have said when, when all five my 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 analogy is all five people are holding the same paintbrush and painting the Mona Lisa smile. Uh, That's what you're going for. Is that, and then uh, you know, well, uh, very few bands last as long. The Rolling Stones, and who else? 
Who else has been around a long time? Petty. Petty was a long, around a long time, still be going. Mm -hmm.